go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome all to the Master Young Show. Oh yeah, so today a lot of news to cover. I wanted to cover the US bank results, but they report the results all very late. So maybe Monday I will cover it, or, or maybe on, on Sunday I'll cover it. So uh, tonight, like BlackRock, la, Bank of America, la, JP Morgan, all this they will report. Yeah, but today I, I won't cover the US bank results. Focus more on China news and also Bitcoin and also on Tesla. Also, welcome all. So, Swifty Forever, then you want left hand slap right hand. Means buy the dip cautiously. MT Powers, Tom Lee says buy the dip. Uh, then Mark Newton calls for cautious. Also, very contradicting view. But overall, I think we are still on a, a, on a bullish trend. Shadow, let's go. Anigoro. Or Mark Lee versus Tom Newton, <laughs> your decision. Trader or investor, la. just buy great companies that are undervalued. Or Chong Ko Star, Yura Hara, good evening. Or Boon, oh, good evening. Cash 11, let's go. Alvin C, Lee Yong. Lee Seng Yi, good evening. Elena Lim, goddess of SGX, welcome, welcome. Niva, welcome. SE down again due, due to the TikTok. TikTok, the, the numbers are uh, very strong recently. But today I never see any new the TikTok news. Uh. Yesterday I had some news on TikTok that I highlighted to you all already. Clement, oh, Baba patience. Baba is still holding uh, at the $70 level. So today the, the China data was a bit uh, weak. That, that's why we saw a bit of red. Okay, so it's 8 p.m. So today let me jump straight into the sharing. After I'm done, then I come back to chit chat with you all, okay? Steady. So China, oh no, deflation again. So who we see here in this picture is uh, Uncle Ma, or, or we call Grandpa Jack Ma. Oh, it looks very old and very weak already. I saw this on Twitter. Yeah, so so now it's quite cold. Uh, so you can feel that he's very thin, very cold, very weak. So ho hope that Jack Ma will have a blessful Chinese New Year. Oh, <laughs> So it's, it's not easy being a Baba shareholder. We really have to endure. Our heart has weakened over the past few years. Hopefully, we, we will recover in 2024. So the consumer prices, oh no. CPI in China continue to decline. So it's negative 0.3. So this is in line with analyst estimates. Uh, and it's a third straight month of decline. So this is deflation oh no so you can see the black line uh, cpi is below the zero percent for three months in a row and the trend seems like it will continue for some time because they are not doing like a bazooka kind of qe to really spur demand so we don't know when it will uptake but more towards uh, sideways uh. even if it is up a bit and we are out of the deflation it's like zero or zero point one like that it, it won't be exciting more towards sideways so be it deflation or inflation, it remains uh, sticky. So uh, the other one is the PPI, which is the regarding to the manufacturing industry. So it's still negative uh, because they have to cut prices to sell to distributors to move their goods or because there is lower demand. As we saw uh, the news in 2023, manufacturing moving out to India and Vietnam. So less manufacturing capacity is needed in China, especially for low-end manufacturing. So we look at the inflation, right? Blue color, tong pi, which is year over year. The the past uh, three months, or oh, negative point two, negative point five, negative point three. Yeah, so it feels a bit. This deflation feels a bit sticky. Previously, when uh in June and July we went into deflation, the government said that we will get out of deflation quickly. They vowed to get out deflation quickly but even they use all those measures or uh, we, we in the end we got out then we now fall back into deflation so deflation kinds of feels sticky now more towards sideways uh. i don't think we'll be getting out of deflation so soon so for this year first quarter um, all eyes will be on the sentiments of chinese new year if chinese new year the dragon year the spending is heavy or people are, are very uh, adventurous travel a lot or give their family big red packet or then we might get out of inflation so so all eyes on the retail sales for chinese new year so for full year 2023 right the export for china disappointing of course uh for the entire 2023 we saw a drop of 4.6 percent 
So China is exporting less goods overseas. And China is the manufacturing hub of the world. Yes, 2023, the global economy had a slowdown. 2024 is poised for a, a mild recovery. So I, I think 2024, the export numbers will be better. So you can look at the chart here. La. Basically, the pink color one is export. So we pick at 2022. Or in, in 2020, the exports was flat due to the lockdown. But due to the lockdown, we saw like the US uh, retailers, Europe retailers around the world. Or when the the shipping was stuck, they, they panicked. So when uh, everything started to unlock, they had huge order. That's why exports exploded in 21 and continue in 22. So this is due to the reopening hype. That's why it's also on a high base. In 23, right, exports came down, right, mostly due to the trade tension between US and China. So American companies, they outsource their manufacturing to India and Vietnam. So India and Vietnam is stealing away some of their uh, low-end, mid-end manufacturing. But China is, is now very focused on like uh, green energy, like manufacturing of EV car, solar panels, all this. Yeah, so... Uh, they, they are still strong in, in manufacturing. They are still the manufacturing hub of the world. So most likely 2024, it will take that up. La. Exports uh, should start to recover again. Go back into growth mode. So for the December numbers, the, the last month of 2023, exports actually increased by 2.3%. So that's a very good sign. So although the, the general data is weak, but the short-term data actually shows signs of uh, recovery. So if you look at the details, right, so 2.3% is better than the 2.1% increase uh, by the analysts. So you can see below, China exports of EV vehicles, lithium batteries, solar cells hit record highs. So although uh, low-end manufacturing, like let's say you buy your iPhone SE, la, your Apple accessories, la, all these people export it from India and Vietnam already. But when it comes to like the EV industries, energy industries, so EV car, batteries, solar cells, China is still doing well. And it's very high growth, it's like double digit growth. So on the balance, I, I'm still positive on the China economy. Uh, it, it's not going to be gone case. La. So after Chinese New Year, the, the CCP will announce that what is their GDP target for 2024. So I believe they will be aggressive. La. They might swing for 5% again. So just wait for after Chinese New Year their announcement for their 2024 economic target. So uh, near term wise, I think the economy is still a bit slow. So, so they must do more to push the economy. So a lot of analysts, they are expecting that they will continue to cut rates. So China central bank is likely to cut key policy rate and pump more cash into the system to push. So next Monday, uh, we, we will get the announcement. So the expect to lower the rates on its one year policy, right? by 10 basis point to 2.4%. So so that, that's very low, or uh, the one year rate. So basically the US is now 5.25. China is now is 2.5. And the next cut, Monday they will cut it another 10 basis point to 2.4. So uh, over the past two, three years, you see that they have been cutting rates very aggressively already from uh, 3.4 now to 2.4. So my view is that they will only continue to cut until the economy starts to pick up. They don't want to like cut too aggressively because they worry that they create a bubble again. So they just want to do enough, huh? do enough to, to, to stabilize things. Yeah, so eventually things will stabilize and, and we are showing signs already. Yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, to invest in the China market is mostly due to valuations. Uh. Uh, Nobody knows when the, the China bull will come back, but we are hopeful that year or dragon, the bull will come. But if you're buying into the Chinese market, it's mostly because it's a value buy. So for this $3 billion top Asia fund manager, so uh, Federated Herms Asia, oh, which beats 83% of its peers over the past three years, also is a top performing fund. Uh. Also Jonathan Pines uh, says that we are buying into Tencent because it's very cheap now. So China, right, we see that most likely, I think we, we are, have bottom off or near the bottom already. Alibaba is not breaking below the $70 level. Although we keep selling down, but the key support level 
seems to be holding well. Then for Tencent, right, look at the historical P ratio. The Tencent average used to trade at about 30 times earnings. Because Tencent is such a huge big tech company, social media, game, payment, cloud, enterprise system. It's basically like Microsoft or it's also like uh, Facebook combined together. So it's like a few US big tech combined together. So you see the US big tech like Apple, Microsoft trading at 30 or 35 times earnings. So Tencent is not, not inferior to Microsoft. It's not inferior to uh, Meta, not inferior to Alphabet. Or it's the Chinese equivalent. That's why in the past it was given a 30 times P ratio. But now it's trading at half or less than the historical P E ratio. That's why five managers are coming in to bargain half, uh, to buy the dip. Despite although there's the crackdown on the gaming. But I mentioned to you all, uh, the local game, right, it only comprises of 20% of their revenues. Yet, uh, Tencent, the stock price is down 15%. So, market is overly pessimistic. So, if you can be a contrarian, you can be greedy when others are fearful, then this is the opportunity. But I myself, I feel that the bigger opportunity is Alibaba and JD. Because Alibaba and JD, the PE ratio is like, Eight times only is re- even more ridiculously cheap. Uh, so I'm betting on uh, Alibaba, JD, and Ping An. But Tencent, I would say that it's not as cheap, but it's more defensive because it's more diversified. It's like an ETF. They own stakes in 200 over uh, listed companies. Like they hold stakes in Ping Toto and uh, New. Or uh, yeah, and, and for like games, they have Epic Games. All this yeah. So so they are very diversified in many industries. So going into the U.S. market, last time I, I shared with you all that uh, I thought inflation uh, sh- should be in line with estimates, but end up U.S. inflation came in hotter than expected. Or uh, analysts was expecting three point two percent, end up it came in at three point four percent. So so that's quite hot, but we don't see the U.S. market selling down because I think we are still in a bull trend. Um, con- uh, I would say that U.S. retail investors are still very bullish. So after these results, right, it seems that the Fed can't use their meeting in January to hint that they want to act in March. It's going to take another round. So this December inflation, it seems a bit high, 3.4. So they will wait for the January and February results or see whether inflation will cool back down towards the 3% level. Then they will make the decision to cut or not uh, in March. So I think it's still 50-50. Lah. But whereas the market is pricing it like, almost a sure thing that they will cut rates in March. So the worry is that now, right, fundamentally, inflation could be sticky or inflation can bounce higher. So looking at the chart, right, you notice that for the headline inflation, uh, the blue color one, it is bouncing up a bit and it's moving a bit to the sideways. Yeah, but if you exclude food and energy is clearly on a downtrend, but it's also not coming down very sharply. It's still at 4%. So like what I say, I feel that inflation is a bit sticky. It might stick at this level. It might go a bit sideways or to the right. Same for the China inflation. China is deflation, but it might also be sticky, at least for the first quarter, uh, January to March. So I think the first quarter, generally global inflation will be a bit uh, sticky. And uh, why is it sticky? It's mostly due to service-related prices. So in the US, you can see that insurance, uh, like, transport, shelter, which is your, your rental, hospital service. Also, all this, right, the prices go up, it's very hard to come down. And it's, it's mostly services is, is the one. Or because everything is more expensive, people demand a higher salary, people, landlords of have to pay a higher mortgage, they demand a higher rental. So the highest in- interest rate also has such effects. Then the worry about inflation is that oil prices spiking or the, the logistics shipping costs exploding. So today, the re- recent news is that in the, the Middle East, or US and UK, from defensive, they now become offensive. They attack the, the rebels. Of course, the rebels in the Yemen, what they did is that uh, they were attacking uh, those that are ships that are passing the Red Sea. So now they attack the, the so-called terrorists, lah, or in the Ye- Yemen, or uh, through, through uh, I think long distance strike and through the airstrikes. 
yeah, to, to disable them. So the, the question is, will this silence them or will they come back to for vengeance? So th that's a uh, un unknown. Uh, I, I won't pretend to be a military expert. Uh. So I, I don't know how long this uh, Middle East tension will last. So the question is, in the recent attack, uh, uh, the shipment in the Red Sea is already down by 30% because it's more dangerous. So they'll take a longer route. So shipping costs have started to go up already. So in the end, this will be translate into what? Inflation. So like the Middle East tension, oil is up 4% tonight. Oil has bottomed off the $70 level. So it's now coming up already. So if oil trends higher due to the Middle East tension towards 80, 85, 90, it comes back up, then inflation will come back up to, to 4%. So that's, that will discourage the US Feds to raise rate. So now we should put more attention uh, on the what is happening in the Middle East or uh, that will in fact uh, affect inflation because oil prices and shipping costs these two will be affected and these two could bring inflation back if inflation come back the feds are unable to cut rates or then the market might sell down then we might have a correction in the second or third quarter for the US market so so that's that's the risk so slowly we see how it plays out but generally for retail investors right they are not looking at the news. They are, they are not reading Wall Street Journal. They are not reading the Economist. They are reading what Wall Street Bet. Wall Street Bet is saying crypto is going to the moon. Oh, so, uh, uh, Bitcoin last night uh, it spiked up and, and came down. So this is the meme on the Wall Street Bet. Billy, it's time you learn about money. So the father trying very hard to teach the kid how to invest and grow his wealth for long term, and the importance of Billy, no, oh no, all the money, all in, YOLO, Wall Street bet, all in Bitcoin ETF. So that someday you can go to the moon and enjoy uh, your, your, your beer on the, on the moon. So is Bitcoin going to the moon? So nowadays, I would say for young investors uh, in, in their 20s, they, they, are, they have, uh, they are, how I say, uh, they embrace crypto. Or they don't put like 2%, 5% of their portfolio in crypto. In fact, they put 100% or they go a few times leverage on, on Bitcoin. Because for them, they don't want to be in the red race. They want to win big or go broke. So that, that's the sentiment that I see on Wall Street Bet. And now that the Bitcoin ETF is approved, wow, you see that the first day, 4.6 billion of fund flow going into the Bitcoin ETF. Then you see the, the BlackRock. So BackRock is the one that is the most prominent because they are the one that filed for the... So previously, others that filed for the physical uh, Bitcoin ETF, they all failed. But when BackRock filed, it caught the attention of everyone. Because BackRock, their track record is almost 100%. Every time they file an ETF, always is approved. So people were bullish that this Bitcoin ETF will finally uh, spot Bitcoin. That means the whole the actual Bitcoin ETF will finally be approved and up it came true. Also Bitcoin had a very good run up and last night we had the doom switch. I tell you already, once the thing approved, retail investors, they will rush in to buy. So you can see that uh, in the opening, people chong and buy, pre-market people whack already. Pre-market, it was the, the uh, ETF, I think IBTC, uh, the, the one uh, under the bedrock one was up 25% or uh, something like that uh, pre-market before the matching it was up as high as because everybody just press the market order buy at market open so open bam then after that uh, what happened the wheels flush them down and start to take profit so they get flushed down so it came to uh, 49k level so then it crashed down to 46k so don't, that I tell you already, don't rush in to buy. Yesterday I keep warning you, don't rush in to buy. Just wait it out, let things come down. Then you look at the product, whether you can buy. So people ask me, Master, uh, which Bitcoin ETF to buy? There's 11 of them. For me, I don't know. Or for me, I, I, because all of them, right, you have to read their prospectus and their prospectus is 100 over pages. So I don't have the time to read 11 ETF, each of them, but, but the, the general one, right, I, I will say that people will go for uh, these two things. One, the most important is fees, uh, the, the cheapest one, because they don't like to pay management fees. Or the cheapest is uh, BITB, uh, B -I -T -B. 
but you know, uh, a lot of them right they waive the, the first year fee so you see the fees is zero it's only for the first year after that they will start to charge an annual fee of 0.2 or 0.49 or whatever but i think their fees they are all very competitive so about the market rate is 0.2 first year is free so uh among all this right i think the two most popular one could be the one by blackrock so blackrock they have the brand iShares. so the ticker code is i b i t so if you want to trade bitcoin i i would recommend you to trade this one this is the safest because this one you have the most liquidity your bid r spread is the most narrow and bedrock is the most reputable today before i came in i just read their results but i won't be covering it because i don't have time to do my slides their aum just hit 10 trillion yeah and their earnings improve that they raise their dividends so they are very uh, reputable you know that this asset manager will be around for the next 10 to 20 years so this one i think is is the one that you want to trade although they don't waive the, the first year first year is not a full waiver they do half price uh. It's 0.12, but it's, it's okay. But I think this will be the most uh, traded. And the ticker code is very easy to recognize. IBIT. Yeah, so you look at Wall Street Bad, a lot of them, they are also playing this one. Then the second one that will have the most attention will be the ARKK Bitcoin ETF. What's Katie Woods is so prominent. She'll go on to like different podcasts, different news channel to tell you that crypto is going to the moon. Coinbase is going to the moon. Tesla is going to the moon. So uh, she has a very strong fan base, la, like, like Elon Musk. But of course, Elon Musk, the fan base is bigger. But people will support her and people will follow Katie Wu's Jie to go to the moon. So this tool, la, I think, will, will, will be your choice. La. So if you like Katie Wu's, then you, then you buy ARKB. If you like the, you want to, you have no idea, then you just buy uh, IBIT. But like I say, la, if you are buying Bitcoin to speculate, then have a stop loss. Uh. So you're going in at 45k, stop loss at 40k, take profit at 60k. But by right, you should be going in crypto as a store of value. For example, you want to put 2-5% to of your portfolio into gold and Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation of the government printing too much money recklessly. Yeah, also below you can see the, the fine prints. Uh. Yeah, is they waive the fee first six months and some of them is the first twelve months. Yeah. So so it's not forever. The zero percent is only the first six or twelve months. So at the end of the day, all of them their fees will be like point two, point two five about there. Lah. So it, that's very cheap. Like you go for crypto, you are expecting much bigger gains. So the last piece of news tonight is about Tesla. So the Hertz ah, uh Hertz is actually a, a car delivery. So during the lockdown period, they almost went bankrupt. But when then they got uh, capital injection and the reopening, it boom. Because people want to travel again, people will rent a car. So there was the news that they wanted to order 100,000 Tesla car. And Tesla rocket to $400. The pre split 400 which is equivalent to 1200 today. So that was the time uh, in 21 and 22 during the high tech boom. Or Hertz was doing very well. So now it's the opposite. Now they want to sell all their Tesla car to buy gasoline car because Tesla car, the maintenance fee is very expensive. So this is negative news for, for Tesla. That, that is very bad for Tesla. Then the second negative news of Tesla is that they continue to cut prices in their biggest market, which is China. China is the biggest EV market. Or in case you, you don't know, US is number two. Uh, the world that has the most EV car is China. China, you go to Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, every 10 car, easily 5 or 6 car is, is an EV. You go to US, every 10 car, maybe just 2, two of them uh, is EV. So China is actually very modern. Although, they, although people keep saying that China is going to collapse, but uh, China is getting more and more modern uh, every day. So they, they cut, Tesla cut their car prices by 6%. After reporting a 15.7 month-to-month sales growth, so that that's very slow la, or that, that their sales growth has slowed down. They want to push hard because why? Because coming is Chinese New Year already, so they want to push hard for a strong Chinese New Year sales so that th their their first quarter will, will look good. So Tesla will be reporting results uh soon already. I think it's next week la. next week or the week after. 
so i i'm quite bearish on the tesla results but i think market has already priced this in so uh last night tesla was down three percent pre-market is down another three percent so tesla the 52 week high is about the 300 dollar level from there you can see that it's actually forming a downtrend you see down up down up also uh the support level right keep breaking new low you see the previous support is here about 250 then now 200 so this coming sell down right if the earnings is bad i think the 200 level will be broken so my bet is that results will be bad tesla will break below 200 dollars because there's a lot of negative news that their sales is not good they have to cut prices and Elon Musk is very focused on Twitter X. He's not focused on, on Tesla. I don't see any positive news on Tesla. So there's no positive news on Tesla. So, and the valuation is sky high. So they're expected to make about $3 plus la for the full year of 2023. Yet their stock price is so high. It's trading at 70 times earnings. So that's ridiculously high. So they're, they're way too overvalued. But, but I may be wrong because overall, you know, Bitcoin is going to the moon, Tesla is going to the moon. So I, I don't know. Yeah, so so that's all my, my sharing for tonight. So like for the banks, right, they have reported results. As a whole, I think their results seems to be quite good. Uh, previously, I shared with you all the Financial Times uh, journal that there's an expectation uh, of that the earnings will drop uh, 13%. Wow, JP Morgan, Bank of America, no good. Because before I came in, right, I, I saw is the Wells Fargo and also the BlackRock. Wells Fargo and BlackRock, uh, before I came in, was quite good. Yeah, so I just briefly go through, but I did not have time. Well, at seven thirty, I checked they haven't announced. Then seven forty, then they announced. Yeah, so I, I will read through their results. Uh. If, if it's significant, then I might do a Sunday special to talk about the U.S. banks. If it's nothing interesting, is that uh, yeah, nothing much. Then then I won't cover uh. Or if, if I say it's oh is that I see a lot of red flags like it, it's gonna explode <laughs> or, or I see a lot of green flags or it's gonna rocket uh big movement ahead then I'll let you on but so far I don't think so la. so 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 for the bedrock results right I will say that, that the results are pretty good pretty good uh you see they raise dividends by by two percent and their earnings grew by six revenues grew by six point seven percent. Then uh, earnings uh, beat estimates, so so quite good. Wells Fargo earnings and revenues uh, both beat, oh, but uh, revenue growth you see very s slow, and like I mentioned, uh, the growth in the fourth quarter is very slow because interest rate has peaked already. Their earnings potential have peaked as as Fed start to cut rates, their net interest margin will start to compress, and then their earnings will be pressured. Then uh, for J P Morgan, or oh, Revenues means estimates. Oh, then uh, earnings beat. Also, I think JP Morgan might, might come down a bit tonight. So yeah, oh, pre market is up surprisingly. Yeah, so I, I have to look at the details uh. Yeah, so so next we look at the Bank of America. Revenues down or oh, ten point five. So that's a big miss. Uh. this is a very big miss. I I would say this is a very big miss. So quite mixed. Uh. I would say U.S. banks the results quite quite mixed. BlackRock, Wells Fargo is good. JP Morgan and Bank of America doesn't seem so, too good. Bank of America uh, down 2% pre-market. So that, that's that's quite quite mixed. So uh, pre-market, the US market is, is uh, last night surprisingly, despite the, the CPI uh, missing, right, the market did not react negatively because they are still hopeful that the Fed will cut rates. So whether Fed will cut rate or not depend on the January and February, the CPI numbers. So, uh, oil is coming up, but it is not a dangerous level. So, uh, if oil, I would say, if oil fluctuates between, I would say, like 70 to 80, it's still okay. But if oil breaks above 80, right, it goes to 80, 85, 90, it, it breaks above 80. What well, you can see, 80 is, is a strong resistance. Resistance means like a ceiling like that. So, if it, it, it goes to 80 then come back now okay but if it goes to 80 and break and comes to 90 or oh, then that will be bearish for the US market strong oil will not be good for the US market if oil goes above 80 the US market will, will, will have a correction because it will impact inflation and feds will lose the ability to to cut rates 
So uh, monitor the Middle East situation, monitor the oil prices. Don't be too fixated on the Bitcoin prices. Uh, Bitcoin is not the, the one that we should be looking at. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Okay, okay. So today Friday already. You are very fast Friday already. Yeah. So hope you all have a good weekend. No need to see too much. Uh, Alibaba, the price uh, seems to have stabilized already. I will say. Uh, SE down 3% last night. Uh, like I shared with you, the, the TikTok news is, is very strong. TikTok, they want to 10x their e-commerce in, in the US and TikTok, their app store, break record sales. TikTok has a 50 billion uh, record war chest. So uh, for SE, right, uh, basically in Asia, the three giants fighting e-commerce is Shopee, Lazada and uh, TikTok. Lazada is less of a, of a threat now because they are laying off 30% of their workers. So more of the eye right, is that I think Lazada is resting itself as third position. They want to focus on being profitable. They want to focus on IPO. So Lazada is taking a different path. So now the two giant are fighting, a two gorilla fighting is SE and TikTok in the Asia market. So that is down 3%, 3% I, I, I would say. Yeah, you see uh, the TikTok news, all this, but um, I don't think it is it's still holding above the $35. So so I'm not too worried. I don't think SE will be uh, crashing or what. Then Alibaba is holding uh, at $72 level. So the 52-week low is 70 la. As long as it don't break below 70 I'm not too worried. La. So yeah, the support is still strong. So all eyes now is on the earning season. Earning season, i update you all. Tesla, Alibaba, SE, fingers crossed uh, on the earnings season. Uh, Alibaba, just well him. Alibaba has to move ahead uh, without Jack Ma. Yeah, Jack Ma, I think he's now enjoying his retirement. Uh. He, he looks like a very lonely man uh, because nobody wants to be his good friend. Uh. If you are a good friend with Jack Ma, you eat hot pot with Jack Ma with the CCP blacklist you. So you can see that he's a lonely billionaire. It gives me the feeling that he, he's rich, but he has is lonely. All his friends abandoned him already. But he do his own thing, lor. He he's conducting lectures in Africa and and Hong Kong, ma. Yeah. So uh, uh Elvin C, uh usually can earn three to five hundred using SE every night. Last night cannot start. Wow, you you use options, is it? SE is good for options. To be honest, SE if you want to earn money, uh, the volatility is high, lah. So you, 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 you sell put lor. Sell sell put. Because you sell put example at a strike price 35. If it comes to 35, you pick up lah. It doesn't come to 35, you earn, earn, earn the premium. Lah. Or if you are holding SE, let's say you bought SE at uh current price lah, $38, then you can sell a call option on SE at uh $45 strike price. It goes to 45, you take profit. If you go or don't go, you earn the premium. And the premium can be 5 or 10%. So SE is a bit like Tesla. It's very volatile. It is good to earn money on options. But but I'm not an option investor. La. I'm a value investor. I buy great companies. They are undervalued. But if you uh, want to earn from options, right? SE is a very good counter to, to play. I uh, not say play. Uh, to, 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 to trade options on, I, I, I would say. Or Shadow. Ivy, Ivy Lim. Oh, you miss Ivy Lim. I, Ivy Lim very soon. Uh, Ivy Lim say end of the week drop. Yeah, Ivy Lim her her, her technical analysis her, her trading very very soon. She's our goddess of SE. Every time she she speak, why I will read her comment. I will highlight her comment. Yeah, because I think it's quite insightful. Because for me, I, I do think that I'm good in fundamentals lah. I I think I I, I dare to say that I'm knowledgeable in fundamentals. But I, I'm a noob lah when it comes to technical uh, technical analysis. I'm a noob lah. I don't know how to trade lah. Yeah, but. When it comes to market news, uh, data, company analysis, ah, I think I, I, I'm helpful, resourceful. Ah. But TA, I don't know. So so if you all got TA insights, ah, feel free to share in, in the group chat. Then I, I find insightful, then I'll read out to, to everyone. Oh, so then you earn, hope SG deflation. Ah. SG, they, they increase the GST there. Uh, that, that, I think that the Jameis Lim uh, ha, ha, had a pose. Ah. Jameis Lim... Uh, I think, yeah, yeah. So Jameson got got a uh, comment. I, I saw eh yesterday. Say 
Jay Muslim say that uh, this is basic uh, economics ah. So if you're not an economics uh, student, then, then then never mind. Yeah. So so he he says that the the, the GST is, is hard fully like, It's a mistake like, That a lot of people fully support. Yeah. Is that basic uh, G, uh, economics like, Yeah. So hey, then people I did it. So you 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 add the five hundred dollar CDC voucher. Uh, the the increased tax is a burden on on consumers like. You you shouldn't uh increase tax uh. you tax too much it, it might have a, a reverse e effect uh. yeah so so the the james lin come in and whack uh. for me you all know my stance uh. i disagree with the gst tax uh. yeah like hong kong doesn't have gst ma. hong kong they get a lot of funding is from the property tax and from the stock stock market the the, the stamp duty but singapore uh we, we our stock market totally there's there's no tax uh. yeah so so uh so that that's 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 that, that's a topic for another day. I would say, yeah, the the, the GST. Singapore is still inflation, uh. that, That's why you, you must go for higher return. Singapore inflation easily four or five percent. Uh. You have to be careful. Yeah, Anigo, I saw some American YouTubers buying K Web, say the rich reward is very favorable. Yeah, so previously you all highlight to me the Bunti video, so I went to watch the Bunti video. So, uh, Bunti video he says that he's buying into M Chin. So I think that now, uh, value investors are coming in, uh, Then we, and traders are also coming in, uh, to seize the opportunity. So, uh, for the Chinese ETF, there's two choice, lah. Uh, one is the M Chin. So iShares is under bedrock. So so I, I like M Chin, uh, because it's it's <laughs> under bedrock. Uh, but the expense ratio point six, uh, a bit expensive, but 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 I would say. Uh, still, still okay. But this one is uh diversified. It is not so tech heavy, so it has like I Tencent, Alibaba. It's very heavy on Tencent uh. But it also has the non tech companies like like CCB got bank bank stocks also. Also, is finance and, and tech uh, inside. So M Chin is very diversified. For KWeb right, is mostly the the tech stock and it's all software stocks. But I don't like KWeb because the P Ping Toto weightage is very high. You see that their PDD weightage is as high as Alibaba Ten, so I'm a bit uncomfortable. I, I don't like KWeb so much. But KWeb is all the software one. So if you want to buy, I I, I would prefer that you all buy the M Chin. Yeah. If you want exposure in, and you have US dollar, you want instant exposure lah. If you are risk taking, then you just uh be, go go for. Uh, like master like me, I don't like ETF, uh, but uh, for me, I don't see a reason paying the 0.6% uh, fees. Uh. I like to focus fire. So my uh, my own master long fund, uh, my, my US portfolio, those who are in my sub stack, you know that my US portfolio is Baba SEJD. Uh. So I put 14,000 US dollar into these uh, three US counters. Uh. So that's my so-called US dollar portfolio. But, but if you don't want to be so risk taking, then your US dollar you, you buy into M Chin. Uh. It's, it's very diversified. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Safer uh, in that sense. Uh. So, Harry CJL, did you see the M2 supply of China? Uh? I don't know. Uh. I, I never see the, the, the money supply of China. But it's increasing uh, rapidly. Uh. Yeah. M, M1, M2, and M3. Uh. I already forget my, my economics already. Uh. Of the M two, uh, M two money supply uh, this one I don't know that, but I think they do, don't have the latest one uh, All this is bad dated one, yeah. But it's increasing very rapidly. Uh, I would say you see, the M two is is to the moon one. Yeah, man. Uh, uh so th there's M zero, M one, M two uh, So so basically, uh, one is the the supply in the open market. The supply help, including the banks. The supply, including the central banks, like that. If I'm not wrong, I forget already. M one, M two, uh, uh, economics. I forget already. What what was that? Yeah. yeah. So saving account, money market fund, and deposits. Ah. Uh. Oh, so uh, M two is uh your open money supply. That means those in circulation. So what I remember is M one is money in circulation. M two is the money that you include in the bank. Which is like fixed deposit, money market, uh, all this law. Also in layman terms, uh, because this, I, I'm not an uh, economics student or economics expert. So M1 is 
mo- uh, money in flo- floating around that like in, in the shops uh, that people use freely m2 it is includes money that is in the bank or in layman terms then look at the chart right is they are the money supply keeps keeps increasing but th- there is deflation why why because uh, a lot of money right is actually trapped in the financial system they, they keep money in the bank deposit to earn two percent interest rate because they don't want to buy property that's why that there's deflation so the, the problem is not money supply uh the is the is that the sentiments is not there people they rather go for a short holiday trip go the hainan tao go to the hong kong spend a few thousand dollars but they don't want to get married they don't want to buy a house they are also the, the lack of spending in the big ticket items they don't want to all in put hundred thousand to buy alibaba they don't want to buy invest in stocks they don't want to invest in property so china the problem right is, is the sentiments problem so uh, i don't know eventually i think the sentiments will, will, will turn uh. also wait wait for them to fire the uh bazooka okay yeah so so yeah hope uh so i hope hope, hope that's the correct explanation uh, on m2 uh, yeah also, empty pals. Tom Hay say Disney PayPal come stock very cheap. Uh. Master have been saying Disney and PayPal cheap cheap. Uh. But but no but then it is it, some might say that it is a value b- trap uh. But I say it's a value buy uh. So Disney PayPal Baba all this to me is value buy. But but in a different camp it could be a value trap. Come stock I, I I'm not familiar. Yeah, but Disney and PayPal I will say is that blue chip so, solid brand uh. Oh, GGML, KD will say that Vanguard is making a huge mistake to not get involved in Bitcoin ETF. What's your view on this? No, to be in any ETF, right, uh, it's actually it's not easy to be an ETF maker because it's very competitive. You see, ETF 11 players, everybody compete on fees and the fees is now zero, you earn nothing. So you go in, there's a cost. So for Vanguard, is different from, from BetRock. BetRock is a listed company, but Vanguard is actually a private company. It's owned by the the employees. It's owned by the management. So Vanguard, they're actually uh, less risk-taking. Like in the China, right, Vanguard actually left the, the China market. Whereas BetRock uh, is still in, in the China market. So so different, uh, because you are a different entity, you have a different risk appetite. Like KD Wu's BetRock, uh, they are a listed entity, their risk appetite is higher. Whereas you are a private entity, you as a boss, you own a stake in the company. You you tend to be more conservative, So so nothing wrong. Uh, Vanguard doesn't want to enter. They don't want to take the risk. They don't want to compete because Bitcoin, right? The thing is that you, you yourself, right? If you are, you don't have the technical expertise, how are you gonna hold the coins? How are you gonna secure and custodize the Bitcoin? If you're not doing that, you're relying on a third party. You use a third party like Coinbase to hold it for you do you need to buy insurance what if coinbase get hacked the bitcoin goes missing then vanguard uh, you get a lawsuit will you be liable or does your insurance co- covers it so there is lit- litigation there's security risk so vanguard as a family owned uh, company they don't want to take the risk that's why they are not, not into the bitcoin etf so so that's the line of thinking whereas bedrock and arkk is just take the risk just make money if we fail, we see how. But if we succeed, we get our year-end bonus. We what first? Oh, so that's the that's the that's the risk uh taking, uh kind of thinking. Oh yeah. So David Wong, uh, chicken follow uh Joseph Carson buy into SPGI. SPGI I don't like uh, the, 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 It's like thirty times earnings is expensive uh. I think the Adam Cool is also the SPGI. I I I, I don't quite like. Uh. That doesn't look cheap uh. Doesn't look cheap. You you be careful. It's very expensive. Adam Koo, he tend to buy comp- a lot of different companies. Some of them not doing quite well, like Hershey's, Nike, uh, they're they not doing well. So, so not all is pick is sure part one. So you better do your own uh, due diligence. I, and I don't think Adam Koo is a true value investor. He's more of a quality investor. It means that he buy the top 1%, the strong companies with a strong moat, but he, he doesn't buy them when, when they are super undervalued if he's a true value investor he'll buy, be buying a lot of alibaba and tencent that, that's what a true value investor will do but for him right is more of his image of a guru to to sell costs he cannot make mistakes 
so he must go for solid picks like the, the, the US blue chips yeah so that, that's my, my, my thinking la. Uh, 50 forever SE I wait for 35 very long now uh, if, if come then you buy law see your fate law got cheap then buy no cheap no buy law. got sale buy no sale no buy law. like that one, right? yeah JD and SE is more risky SE is risky because it doesn't have a track record of profitability but most likely 2023 full year earnings will show a profit then it can it can rocket from there JD the risky is accounting risk because 80% uh, of JD market cap is cash but we don't have a certainty that the cash is there but JD has paid dividends twice before has done share buybacks so there's a high possibility that the cash is real I choose to believe that JD the cash is real so I will DCA into JD but JD is not my, my top conviction uh. my top conviction is Alibaba uh, which is the, my most solid pick that I dare to go all in SE and JD I won't put more than 10% on my portfolio or into SE and JD because I think they, they is considered higher risk higher return pick law. whereas Alibaba and Ping An Alibaba and Ping An I can put 100% on my portfolio in just Alibaba and Ping An just two discounts because they are too big to fail they, they cannot go bankrupt man. if Alibaba and Ping An go bankrupt right hundreds or thousands of people will be jobless then CCP will lose billions of annual tax so it's impossible for, for Alibaba and Ping An to go bankrupt. The government will step in. Just like during the COVID crisis, the market came, stepped in, do rise issue for SIA at $3. SIA recovered, went to $6. So basically, when your company is too big to fail, it's government back, you have a free put options. You know, at the worst case, the CCP will come in, the government will come in to save you. Or that, that's the company that I'm willing to go all in. Example, DBS. DBS dropped to $30, $15, I will all in and, and buy because the market will not let uh, DBS go bankrupt. So so that's the conviction uh, sometimes. Uh, but, 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 but my conviction on Alibaba has, has weakened, weakened already. Hopefully it, it will strengthen in the year of the dragon. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Baba, Meituan, JD do, do a lot of share buyback. KT Wood favorite, la, uh, Shadow. Uh, Shadow, you like KT Wood, JJ, everybody. Uh, yeah, I should put one picture of KT Wood, JJ at the end. I forgot to put yeah i should end with, with the kt wood yeah today too too busy doing doing my slides yeah a lot of news ha happening today yeah so it's happy friday hope you all en enjoy your your weekend yeah now we're really seeing a lot of share buybacks like we saw tencent from 400 three four hundred million buybacks hong kong dollar per day they upsize it to, to one billion so you, you what i believe is that in the coming earnings result one of the positive catalysts is that after they announce results, these Chinese companies, they upsize, all of them, they upsize their share buybacks. Why? Because number one, their earnings increase, their cash, cash flow improve. Number two, their stock price is depressed. That's why they want to do more share buybacks to put, lift up their, their, their stock price. So uh, increasing share buybacks is also a, a positive catalyst. Anigaro, Adam Ku is CB. He sold Tencent. Yeah. He, he sell Tencent, then... He asked whether he, 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 he should buy back or not. Ah, yeah, bullshit. Lah. He no conviction in China. Lah. But whether he, he sell the, the Tencent and Ping An already or not, we also don't know. Yeah, the, the YouTubers, they can show you their, their screenshot or whatever, but all can be manipulated. One Excel spreadsheet or trading account, all can be manipulated. You will never know the truth. truth one. Yeah. So for me, I, I'm not a, a guru. I, I'm fake guru. Yeah, so you don't be concerned, master the portfolio how. I'm not here to show off my portfolio. In fact, I'm ashamed of my portfolio. I'm not here to tell you that Master is super guru every year, eight, earn 20-30%. No, no. Master is lose 200000 on Alibaba. I'm just an uncle talking cock on the stock market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then if you enjoy my talk cock, then you stay on. And what, <laughs> every day come in, see, see me talk cock. Yeah. J-Lo, welcome, welcome. Tesla, no match for BYD. Yeah. The misconception is that people think that Tesla is the price... Uh, lowest cost uh, manufacturer answer is no BYD is the lowest cost manufacturer in fact Tesla has to buy the battery from CATL and buy the battery from BYD so BYD the car is better than Tesla and at a cheaper price and BYD has outsell Tesla in 2023 so 2024 Tesla continues to face intense competition so yeah so Tesla ha it doesn't have a mode lah. That's not the mode. It's not technology. Uh, it's, it's the brand. 
and the, his, the Tesla brand is very strongly related, correlated with Elon Musk, I, I would say. Go Kim, thanks for your Milo thing. What la? Crypto to the moon. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So every time Go Kim treat Milo thing, master must, must service him a bit. And and look at the crypto price. Wow. Bitcoin still the same, la, sideways. La. So the past 24 hours is sideways. So like I mentioned, la, we, we had the pump. They pumped it up last night uh, during the, the market open. Market last night market open uh 10 10 40 p.m. Pam 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 to like almost like like, like 49k like that. Then the euphoria that that off. Then now sideways la. So the, the doom switch is over. So now it's I would say it's consolidating la. Uh, I think I would say the entry level will be like 44k or 40k. So you wait for the pullback. You want to get in at about 44k. You want to be more conservative. Then you wait for the pullback to come about 40 42k la. So I think. Entry level will be 44 or 42k. If you pull back to 44 or 42k, then you you, you buy. Lor. Then you have a stop loss at 40k. Then you take profit at 60k. Uh, that, that will, but but like I say, lah, Bitcoin, most people, they do it for trading. Lah. I don't think you are buying Bitcoin for, 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 for long term. Lah. Uh, so, don't be surprised. It, it, you see, like nowadays, like mainstream, you see, even oil, gold, People also put for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is so mainstream already that everybody, the eyes is, is on. More people are looking at the price of Bitcoin than the price of oil. But for me, looking at the macro environment, I'm more concerned of the price of oil. Because Bitcoin goes to 50, 60K, it doesn't matter. But if oil goes to $80 or $90, it could crash the US market because inflation will come back. Yeah, so, so look at oil, don't, don't look at Bitcoin. Uh, that, that's that's my my, 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 my thinking uh. 50 f uh forever then you earn uh march 2017 tesla announced purchase or uh, tesla announced purchase five percent stake in tesla now, now don't know tesla stake uh whether tesla is still holding the five percent stake or not yeah but but previously i saw this news also but they never update so so the tesla portfolio is like a black box like that but their portfolio is very very huge I would say more than half of the Tencent uh, value comes from their, their this investment portfolio. It has listed companies, it also has the uh, private companies. La. Like example, Tencent has a 17% uh, stake in SE, C Limited. Uh, Tencent has a 20% stake in Pinkdoto. So a lot of those uh, good uh, high growth tech companies, they, 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 their major shareholder is actually Tencent. So Tencent is actually like an ETF like that. Yeah. Yeah, Chunyuan, Tesla should, should end cash. Yeah, they are, they are Tesla. Sell and take profits. Yeah. Tencent is very hard to value. Uh, Alibaba is easier to understand. Because Alibaba, their core business like e-commerce. Then from there, cloud, payment, uh, logistics. So, and plus their cash position investment portfolio it is easier to do the sum of parts on Ali, of alibaba and for me e-commerce is easier to understand but i myself i use shopee like you see the 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 the, the, the sound food pack behind me that i just take i buy from shopee one one piece is one dollar sixty cent so I, my, my 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 first take right here but I, I i never buy enough so i'm ordering another shipment and and it, it then the supply come from china one week come already so I order that one week from China, it shipped to me. And the shipping fee just $2 only, so cheap. So it's just one sixty per piece. That is the cotton, synthetic cotton. Nah. Also, don't know if you all feel that uh, now my, my room is, the sound the sound is better. Although my, my software, I'm using the OBS. Ah. OBS itself, the software has noise cancelling. But sometimes my, my neighbor is noisy. You all don't hear the noise, but I hear the noise. So I need to do a bit of soundproofing. Ah. So, Hopefully, in the long term, it, it will help. So, I'm spending like a few hundred bucks, maybe like $300 or to, to soundproof my, my entire room. Because one piece is a dollar sixty. I need like two, three hundred pieces to, to cover my room. Yeah, so I slowly soundproof my room. So, I buy all this from Tron. So, e commerce to me is very easy to understand. That's why I invested in JD, Baba, and, and SE. Invest within your circle of competence. Tencent is very defensive, very diversified. Uh, but then that, the good thing about Tencent is that you don't need to do so much due diligence because they are so diversified. You're basically buying an ETF. You buy M-Chain, you buy Tencent, it's also the same. 
Well, Tencent, they hold stakes in Ping Pong Duo and, and SE, all this. Uh, so, so it's like an ETF, uh, ten, Tencent, I would say. Yeah. Okay, CCP boosts real estate. Uh. They, they are doing a lot to stabilize real estate. Every month, they announce news. Uh. So, just waiting at month by month, uh, we look at the real estate data. So, eventually, it will stabilize. Uh. But, but I think first quarter of 2024, numbers will still be weak but i'm hopeful that in the second quarter uh the the, the year of the dragon the green shoots will start to shoot up uh, then we will start to see growth again for the china market so I'm, I'm thinking first quarter still sideways then second quarter we start to go for the dragon ready fundamentally uh, so that that's my thinking uh, for the Ch china market oh rough wow i like your the uh, firecracker pa, 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 pa. Yeah, KWeb the expense ratio is, is, is quite high. Yeah, so, so, so I, I I don't like the, all these the, the the US. I don't, that's why I don't like ETF uh, huh? The expense uh is is quite high. Point nine six nine uh, That's about point seven percent. So it's a bit expensive. I uh, I I don't like. That's why I prefer to be a stock picker. I don't like to pay management fees. But but let's say you are a new investor or you you do, don't want to invest too much in the Chinese market. You only want to put five k. Five thousand uh, dollar, US dollar in five thousand dollar. Ah, yeah. Then you just might as well just buy an ETF, lah. Oh, yeah. But for me, five thousand dollar, I will just all in. Bye bye already. So it's so, up to you in, in the end. Yeah. Another way you can just buy the double dragon. You just buy Alibaba and Tencent instead of buying the the, the ETF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh. Chun Yuan. Oh, I use Google mention published. Uh. Chow months ago. Why then financing approved will be expedited for projects to make smooth progress. Also, that's good for the uh, property market. Uh. They want to quickly uh, inject the, the money into the project so that uh, the projects can continue running immediately. So they expedite it. Uh. So they, they, they quicken the, the, the process. Uh. So because, uh, as, let's say, uh, as a property developer, right? Uh, let's say you're a property developer. Once you stop your, your project, right? Or it's like you, you stop giving blood already. So cash flow is like blood. Once the property developer, the cash flow is cut off, right? It cannot pay the suppliers. It cannot continue building. It cannot deliver the property. Then the whole house of cut collapse. So it's very important to keep the blood flow circulating. So now they are uh, pumping in more blood. Uh, not that they are in ICU. La. I think the worst is over already. Definitely we are not in ICU. ICU la the Chinese property market, but, but now is that the patient is still sick, so it's on the drip. Yeah, then we hope that the patient will get well soon. That, that's how I will interpret uh, these Chinese developers. Though. Yeah. Our gas is a good buy now. I've been with our gas is, is sell the luxury watch one. Our gas, I, I super long never see that, but it's more like a dividend stock. Uh, because for them, right, no growth, it's a bit cyclical, not much growth. Then it's not that they can open more outlets or what la. yeah. So it's a bit cyclical la. up then down. Dividend yield five percent. Five percent is not bad la, I would say. PE ratio or six times PE la, That's very cheap. So our gas could be undervalued. But one thing you must understand that uh, they sell is a, a one, not a basic need. Like Seng Song market sell rice, sell toilet paper is basic need. But our gas sell Rolex ah. Philip Pate la, all this uh, is is a is a luxury la. Also, the hourglass, in case you all don't know, is is the uh, uh, shop that sell the the luxury watches one la. Also, you will see all this at Orchard Road, all this uh. For me, master, I've gone into hourglass many times before, but I've never bought anything before. Every time is my friend want to buy, then I accompany my friend la. So last time I used to be a poker player. So sometimes uh when they have a huge win. They celebrate, they buy themselves uh, their gift or, or for their girlfriend, then they go our gas. Yeah. The orchard orchard one is is, is the is the bigger one. Uh. Yeah, and then, you know but it could be a bit cyclical uh, for, for this uh, business. What is in the luxury? Yeah, uh, Contina is also a sell watch one. It's the competitor. Contina and our gas both is about the same. Uh. Also uh, retails are, but I'm more familiar with our gas. I, I don't go to the uh, Cortina. Chun Yuan, I prefer buy Chinese tech 
insurance and US REITs haven't leave pop yet. Uh, yeah. REITs uh, recently up 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 quite 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 a bit already. Yeah. Mom Ming Kok, many Chinese ladies like Indian men now because Indian men are handsome and good looking. Indian the, 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 their features are, are, are very sharp. Yeah. Uh, the Wu Kwan, uh, Wu Kwan, how to say uh, in English? Means the, the nose, the head, all this. Uh, not like Master, Master, my, my face so round, Master so ugly. Or, uh, girls, they, they like the sharp, sharp features. Sharp, big nose, uh, means uh, very wealthy for, for Chinese. Uh, uh, Jasper Lim, is EV running out of steam? Mm, no, I think EV, like you look at the Chinese players that like BYD, Lin, Xpeng, Neo, they are all doing very well. But like I say, like EV, you are you are picking the future, lah. Because five to ten years later, only the top five EV players uh, will make it, lah. And the market already priced in that Tesla and BYD will be the top five. But the other three is still unknown. It could be Lin, Xpeng, Neo, all this. But uh, Alibaba is selling out of her X Xpeng. Then Tencent uh, holds a ten percent stake in in Neo. So Tencent has, has stakes in everything. If you want to buy EV, you might as well buy the Tencent. Tencent also got, got stakes in, in Neoma, 10% stake. If you like XP, you might as well Alibaba, buy Alibaba. Alibaba has 7% stake in, in the XP. That You get more bang for your buck. Yeah. If you want BYD, then I don't know what to buy with you. Warren Buffett continues to sell his stake in BYD from, I think, 20% stake cut to 8% already. But uh, BYD, uh, if uh, you force me to buy an EV company, I will choose BYD. La. My, my topic is still BYD, but I do not know enough. It is not within my circle of competence. So 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 I, I don't have a buy call on BYD. Dominic Teo, always nice to see you. Hope, hope you're doing well. Hope someday can meet you again. Link copy. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Then I, I bump into you. Uh, then we go coffee again. Chit chat. Nice chatting with you. Uh, hope you enjoy my sharing. Uh, yeah. Hey, stay, stay healthy. Yeah. Uh. Oh, Dominic Teo, oh, go for a walk, walk more. Walking is good exercise. SGP Sarong Party Girl. Uh, Sarong Party Girl sounds, sounds familiar. I also forget what it means already. Uh, Katie Woods is the female version of AK, Adam Kuha. <laughs> sales thing oil. I, I mean, salesman. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Sawadi Cup. Uh, SGP is the Singapore Petroleum Gas. Uh, is it? I don't know. Uh, okay. If you book online, it's underage. Uh. Wow, like that one. Uh. Which law? Wow, wow, wow. I don't know. Singapore, wow, you are talking about what is it called pimping already. Eh? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, wow, you all know so much. Uh. Master Go Gilang. Master Go Gilang eat the frog porridge. Yeah. Master uh, don't eat the chicken rice. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, just kidding. Yeah. Mr. Tokyo, I see YouTube people explore Gilang district. Uh. YouTube, usually you have those like vloggers. Uh. They, they will do the nightlife in Geylang, nightlife in, in, in Thailand BKK, uh, nightlife in uh, Ho Chi Minh. Uh, it's quite, quite interesting. Uh. You, then you can see the bar, the nightclub, the massage parlors, all this. Or you can just watch on, on YouTube. Not that I encourage you all, uh, but if you're in, or curious, you all can go have a look. Or you want to, from a boy, become a man, you could go have a look. Master no need to see because Master see in person before already. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, chill, get young. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Lim CH, NVIDIA close new all-time high. 500, yeah, yeah. NVIDIA very strong. Uh. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, Bitcoin, all is rocketing. Uh. NVIDIA, the thing is that now the, the, their pricing, their execution uh, is to perfection already. So now it's just wait for the result. You see, all the way up, not much volatility. But PE-wise, 44 times. But the forward earnings expectation is very optimistic. Uh, uh, there is rumors that uh, ByteDance, Alibaba, Tencent cancelled uh, some of their orders with, with NVIDIA. Then they put their order with the Yao Yao Ling Xian Huawei. These rumors, uh, we don't know if it happened. But if it happened, that, that might impact the, the NVIDIA, the, the fourth quarter results. So we, we see how it goes. Oh, my main call. Better be safe and buy our gas. Get dividend. Uh. Dividend stock. Uh, our gas, I would say, is a dividend stock. Uh, but if you it's within your circle of competence, that, then okay. Uh. But for me, like me, I, I don't own a Rolex. I don't own a Philip Pate. So I won't buy our gas. I go to Sing Song. I buy rice, buy toilet paper. So I will buy Sing Song. 
I go to BKK clubbing massage. Eat Thai food. Then I will buy Chang beer. I will buy Thai beverage. So buy the company within your circle of competence. And you think the PE ratio is low. The dividend is attractive. Then you go ahead. But our glass on the surface, six times earnings, five times dividends. Uh, it looks cheap uh, on the surface. But you, you, it must be within your, your circle of competence. Like you must understand uh, how it makes money. What is the customer service? Why, why is their mode? All this. Yeah. So MK, uh, Capital Land China Reed is good bet now. 0 0.65 book value, 8.4% you. Wow, that's very cheap. That's very cheap. Looks very undervalued. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I, I, I bet my money on Ping An. Yeah. <laughs> Go for insurance instead. And insurance tech. Uh, but, but REITs now, uh, I would say some REITs are, are, are cheap. Uh, like the China REITs. Yeah. Because people think that China is uninvestable. Okay. Chu Ket Yong want to buy EV company, might as well buy the battery companies. Yeah. So battery companies uh, is like CATL. CATL is still in the Shanghai Center Exchange. So it's the top battery maker. So the top few battery makers is like CATL, BYD, all this. Yeah. So so you all can go take a look. But but I won't I'm not an expert in bat battery technology and EV industry. La. I, I'm still learning la, uh, I would say. But uh, I own shares in Alibaba, Alibaba holds stakes in X Xpeng. So I do have a, a bit of exposure to the to the EV. Yeah. Geylang got nice dim sum. Ah. No, usually I go Ge Geylang is to eat the, the, the frog porridge. Ah. The Kong Pao uh, Tian Ji Zhou. Wow, Sibei Power one. Very nice. Yeah, Esterdam. Uh, Esterdam wow, is the best. Ah. Go and eat the space cake. Ah. Smoke weed. Ah. Just kidding. Yeah. I used to go uh after them quite often uh, because they like to hold the event there because it is it, it is quite cheap. Yeah, uh, MK read that India data center buying and DVA chips. Uh, wow, India feel the gap for China. So there will be, be a decoupling law. So those under the G7, they will buy from Nvidia. Those under the BRICS, they will buy from Huawei. So it will be divided. Uh, the market will, 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 will be divided. But India, their spending power is, is not that high. Uh. The, the Chinese big tech Alibaba Tencent buy down by two. The, the, the order is huge. Uh. The order is as much as the US big tech. But but the main customer is still the US, the Magnificent 7, but buying from Nvidia or like the Microsoft, Alphabet, uh, and the Amazon, all this, uh, and Tesla. But but then now they, they lose Alibaba, Tencent, buy down, all this. So, so that is like one fifth, one quarter of their revenues. Of, of Nvidia, so uh, how are they gonna make up for the loss of the Chinese market in two zero two four? So so that's the big question mark. That's the risk for for Nvidia. Yeah. So so that's all my sharing for tonight. Oh, hope you all enjoy it. Oh, have a good weekend. Don't think so much. Oh, so everything stabilized already. Alibaba no longer crashing. Also oh, enjoy your good weekend. Spend time with your loved one. I'll see you all on Monday. Take care all. Taiwan who will win? I don't know. I never see that. I'm not into the politics or election. Oh, I I, I like the, 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 the female one. I, I support female. Female one is called Chai Ying Wen. Yeah, I support the female one. Oh, I don't know. Because it's, it's not easy la, at, to be a female politician. I, I would say. Yeah, the, the address also not familiar. La. Yeah, so, so uh, may, may the best person win. Taiwan election, I think it's a three, three-legged race. La. Maybe tonight I go YouTube, see see a bit, see 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 those China news ah, uh, gossip gossip ah, uh, then they speculate who who is the winner. Yeah, so take care everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Good night.